So in a lot of videos, I show this app. It's called BTOP. And a lot of people are always asking, what is that thing? Top is usually the first utility people recommend to monitor Linux or really any form of Unix, including Mac OS. And it's efficient, it's available almost everywhere, but it's also a little bit basic. It shows the essential metrics like memory and CPU usage, but it kind of looks like it's from the 80s. There are ways to brighten it up, like highlighting active processes or changing color schemes, but it's not the only game in town. In this video, I'm going to talk about more modern monitoring tools for Linux. And some are actually not so modern, but they're still really useful. And I'm going to run through the ones that I use most often with some notes about how I use them. Let me know in the comments if you have any other ones that you might like too. Kicking things off, there's S2E. It's kind of a, an interface for stressing out your CPU cores and seeing how they handle it. Uh, it's not useful for a general broad overview of your system or anything, but it is useful for, especially if you're like on a new system and you want to burn it in and, and make sure that the fans are working and all that. It gives you an overview of the temperatures, the clock speeds, all those kind of things. And you can either have it in monitor mode or stress mode. And if you have stress or stress NG installed, then you just switch to stress mode and it'll start loading up all your cores, or you can configure it to do other things too. Uh, but that lets you kind of have a quick overview of how your system's running under load. I first found out about this tool from uh, Serve the Home. I saw Patrick used it in some of his videos, and I was like, what is that thing? And he said, it's S2E. So uh, it works on Linux and Mac OS, and it seems to work on uh, whatever hardware I throw at it, even on newer systems like the Ampere 1. Next up is HTOP, and it's often installed by default, like on Raspberry Pi OS. It's very much like TOP, but focuses a little bit more visually on the CPU metrics, more than like memory and other things. I like it because it's a really quick way to see, like, is the system being utilized or, you know, what processors are, are using the most CPU. Um, I often use it because it's a little lighter weight than some of the other tools, but it's a little nicer than TOP. And then after that, we're getting into one of the more technical tools, ATOP. ATOP gives you an overview of all the metrics, the core metrics on the system that might affect performance that you might not notice using one of the other tools. It shows you things like interrupts, IRQs, um, which can be useful if there's a process that might be pinning itself to just one CPU core and, and you see that the interrupts are going crazy. It also gives you uh, packets in and out on the network. It gives you uh, disk access, um, different write speeds and things for all the disks on your system. And there's a lot of little little things in here. I can't explain it in this particular video, but if you run it, you can set it to uh, different intervals and really debug some of the little deeper issues that you might find that you can't see with some of the other monitoring tools. And kind of the polar opposite of that, focusing very narrowly on just one thing, there's IFTOP. And this is really useful for seeing uh, network traffic in and out on a particular network interface. So right here, I'm using it on the Raspberry Pi to see the traffic that's going to and from one of my Macs. And uh, it, it just shows you all the traffic broken out by where it's going or where it's coming from. And it gives you a good overview of, of the data rates and things. So this is useful sometimes if I'm doing network copies and they're not performing like I would expect, or if I just want to make sure that, you know, internet's working or something like that. This is a good tool for monitoring that in more detail than some of the other tools. And similarly for if top for network, IO top is for disk bandwidth. So if I want to check, you know, what kind of processes are using the, the hard drive or an SSD or an NVMe or whatever storage on the system, uh, the nice thing with IOTOP is it breaks out the disk I.O. by process. So if you're experiencing some weird slowdowns or you, you see a lot of, you know, I.O. IO weight or something like that in one of the other tools, you can pop into here and see what processes are hogging a drive. And there's actually a fancier tool, too, that you can install, Sysdig. And uh, there's an interface with CSysdig that lets you dig directly into processes. And you can also kind of like sort processes by volume of data written and look at particular files that are being written. It's, it's a really handy couple of tools to use if you need to see disk access. And this is a little bit more specialist. You know, not every system has a GPU that you want to monitor, but NVTOP. It's a lightweight task viewer that works with AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, and Apple GPUs. Um, some tools also include some basic GPU metrics like BTOP on some systems works for that. Uh, but NVTOP gives you all the hardware detail, like it gives you power consumption, fan speed, memory consumption, even a, a process breakdown, and, and whether it's using CPU or GPU. It's very useful for debugging things with, um, you know, Vulkan support or CUDA or other things like that. Uh, there are other, other tools that go much deeper, like Radeon Top, AMD GPU Top, uh, or NVI Top for NVIDIA. Uh, but NVTOP is almost universal, and it works with 
almost every GPU I've ever tried. Uh, it's nice to have one tool that works with everything because that way you don't have to specialize in one tool or install one thing in, in different ways. Um, and it's just an apt install or a brew install away. But something that's a little bit more narrowly focused, I use Macs a lot, and uh, Apple has, of course, the Activity Monitor, which is okay, but it's not amazing. Uh, but there's a utility called ASITOP, A-S-I-TOP, and it breaks down uh, all the different Mac processor components. It has the GPU, it has the NPU, it has the, uh, the RAM usage, it gives you power measurements, something that's kind of hard to get at a lot of times on the Mac unless you use other tools. Um, so, you know, I don't normally get too platform specific with my tooling, but sometimes when you do need to debug something and you're on a Mac, it's nice to have a tool that can help you a lot more, like something that's on Linux and, and usually not available for Mac. And this, this is the, the, the tool that I think most people see in a video and they're like, oh, I really like that. It, it, it makes you feel like you're hacking something. I don't know why. It's just well designed with colors and the fading and all that kind of stuff. B-top. And I call this kind of the Lamborghini of tops. Uh, not only does it have those nice things, it has full color and mouse support and kind of a video game like menu system. Uh, and it doesn't really hide anything away. Uh, it makes you look, I think it makes you look kind of cool if you're using it. Uh, but these visuals aren't really just eye candy. It actually does help to see when your CPU is overloaded or when your memory is full or something like that. So uh, it's, it's nice. I, I usually install it after I've done a basic overview of a system. I'll install it on there because it's, it's the most handy utility and it's pretty lightweight. Uh, for general system resource monitoring. It doesn't get too specialized, like you can't see some of the metrics that you might need out of a CPU or GPU or something like that, but it's nice. And one thing that happens a lot is uh, you'll open it up and you'll see, especially if you're in an SSH session, weird color bars popping up all over the place. All you need to do is go into the options menu, press O, and then go uh, set true color to false, and that will go away. And <laughs> on the polar opposite side of the spectrum, but on the way more useful if you need to dig into something is perf. And on Linux, you just say sudo apt install Linux perf. That's on Debian. And you know, it, it's like if you monitor a system with BTOP or ATOP or TOP or whatever, and you see that there's a bottleneck, a lot of times you don't know what that bottleneck is or how deep it goes. If you want to figure out that bottleneck, Perf is really the tool that you need to use. Um, I am not the expert on this. I, what I usually do is I find like the little thing that I need to do in it, and then I'm like happy and I document that so that next time I can find that same command. Uh, but Brendan Gregg really has a great explainer on Perf, uh, and I'll link to it in the description. But he even writes a whole book on Linux performance monitoring, and it uses Perf a lot. So, uh, and for those who are wondering, yes, that's the same Brendan Gregg who is uh, famous for this clip, shouting in the data center. Try this at home. Ah! And finally, this is kind of more of an honorable mention or something. It's not really a top tool, but it is a very handy monitoring tool that I use uh, when I'm doing anything with Wi-Fi is Wavemon. Uh, Wavemon lets you uh, kind of see the signal quality for Wi-Fi signals way better than any other tool. Or what I would usually do is I would say like watch with uh, you know one second interval on NMCLI or IWConfig or something. But the problem with those tools is A, they're not very visual. And you know I'm a visual person, so I like to see a graph or a chart or something like that. And also, <laughs> for some reason, with all the tools for IP addressing and wireless and things, it's like IWConfig, IPConfig, IfConfig. Uh, IP, all these tools are in the same kind of headspace for me, so I can always, I always forget which one it is that I'm looking for. But with Wavemon, it's like, oh, you're monitoring the waveform of the antenna or whatever. I just remember that more. Um, but the nice thing about this is when you, when you install it and run it, it gives you this chart and you can kind of switch to, to a couple different modes. Um, and you can learn, you know, where exactly to point your antenna or your laptop or something to get the best stable connection with Wi-Fi. So a handy tool, and, and all these tools are really handy. Like I said, this is not all the top tools out there, but these are the ones that I use the most. I've been documenting these over the years and kind of compiling them all into this video because I didn't want to just say like, BTOP is cool. I wanted to show you all the different tools I use. And uh, please let me know what tools you use. Anyway, that's uh, Level 2 Jeff for you. We just go through something quickly and that's it. And I uh, will see you in the comments.